Everybody say what's up to Bog. What's going on, Bog the fishing Bog? Well, my balls fishing. I, I got a video I think you guys are gonna be interested in because it's about self-reflection <laughs> and being aware of yourself and kind of saving money in the long run because basically there's two things that I know about myself. Number one, I'm cheap. You, if you guys watch the videos, you know that. Like I look to cut corners. We, we put so much time, effort, and money into fishing. Any way that you can cut corners, but still, you know, be able to get on the water, still have decent products, is something that you need to do, especially if you're obsessed with, with this sport like we are. The other thing I know about myself though, is I break stuff. Yeah, and you guys know that too. Ouch. 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 How stupid can you be? Totally freaking smash my ground. I'm like literally about to cry. <laughs> my fault accidents happen out on the water it's just the reality whether it's in the heat of the moment or like the graph on the front that i broke that i just showed you guys literally i kissed it with a one and a half ounce tungsten and whole screen spidered out it's my fault like that that's just the reality but in the heat of the moment you know when you're focused on fishing stupid things tend to happen and accidents tend to happen and one of the most expensive things on your boat from an accessory standpoint is oftentimes your graph and this is probably something I should have done a very long time ago. I've broken two graphs in a matter of like two years. And note, a lot of you guys think I fish every day. This is fishing like two days a week or so. Like fishing weekends, maybe fishing a Friday, things along those lines. So statistically, it's bound to happen at some point to you. And it's, it's not a fun experience, dude. It will break your heart when a $3,000 graph goes crack on the screen. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna take a step. Like I said, I'm cheap, but sometimes paying it forward in the form of taking action to sort of inhibit or, or prevent issues, accidents, like I cause and like happen to you out on the water is a way to save money and be cheap in the long run because spending another $3,000 to buy a graph is not cheap. Spending 60 bucks to tackle warehouse to get this graph glass that's pretty cheap, relatively speaking. So what we're gonna do today, I got graph glass for my graphs. I'm going to go ahead and do an install video and show you guys how they kind of go on, how you mount them on the graph. It's a lot like putting um, like a protective screen on your um, cellular phone, or on your, your tablet, things along those lines. I'm gonna show it to you how to install them. And then we're also gonna do a review. We're gonna boot them up and um, see how the touch screen work, kind of evaluate the thickness of the, the glass protector that comes in these things and uh, just do a total breakdown because sometimes being cheap with the accidents that we run into is not really the long-term way to be cheap. There's ways to protect the things that are expensive on your boat that if you break them, they're gonna inhibit your fishing. So that's what we're gonna do today. Come along with me, graph glass install and a little bit of a review. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you don't do it for me, do it for Bug. You wanna do graph glass? Graph glass? It means more fishing, that's good. Yes, that's so good. So I got my HTS 12. The graph glass comes um, custom for each kind of graph. So if you have a hummingbird, like I don't even know the numbers on them, like a Solix or something like that, you're gonna order a different size than, than what I did for my HTS Live. Same goes for say like a carbon, a Lawrence carbon. There's different size glass for each graph. So I have an HTS Live 12. Obviously it's a 12 inch screen. This is the one I got. Initially too, what I kind of found interesting is this is 0.33 millimeter. So I mentioned when we started off the video, like this is a lot like installing that protective thing on your, on your, on your cell phone or your, um, your tablet. But honestly, this is like that times maybe like four. The thickness of this glass is much, much wider in diameter. Let me see if I can slide it out a little bit here for you real quick. It's much wider in diameter. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's much thicker than the standard um, the screen protectors that you get like say off of Amazon for your cell phone and that, which, which I like because the, the reality is the way I've broken basically both of these graphs is because of a weighted type bait, whether that's a tungsten weight. Well, the first one I broke was with a jig and that impact 
is pretty strong. If you're casting it, if it's swinging around, it's a high impact. So you need something that's really gonna buffer that impact. So the thickness of this the, the glass protector is something I'm seeing already and liking because the reality is if I hit that graph, I want to one, not break anything, which is an ideal situation, or two, I wanna break the glass and I want the glass to absorb all of the impact because I will peel it off and I will put on another one and I will say, thank you, graph glass because I just spent 60 bucks to save me 3,000. So that's something that I noticed right off the bat, plus the simple instructions. But the first step, and what I would recommend is having the right stuff to install this. It's pretty simple, like I said, and pretty straightforward. It comes with a cleaning pad, but my recommendation is your initial step to get started before you even already open the package. But before you even like dig into the actual instructions and that, have yourself some, this is clean sp screen gel spray. Basically, this is like laptop or tablet cleaner, something along those lines. You can get it at like Walmart, um, Amazon, any of those places. But it's, I don't even know what's in it. It's not water and it's not like Windex or anything. It's kind of a, a very gentle um, cleaning solution. Get one of these and usually they come in a kit and they come with like this super awesome microfiber cloth. So that's the first thing I'd recommend because I don't know about you guys, but my graphs do get dirty. Even this is actually just one day of fishing. The water bumps up, it gets residue on it, but you get some fish juice on it. Bog, you go and lick my graphs and drool on them. It gets messy, dude. So the first thing is I'd recommend doing an initial cleaning. So that's what we're gonna do right now with some of this solution. So basically I'm just gonna put some of that spray on there and then take that microfiber cloth and um, make sure you're getting like these edges because oftentimes you can get stuff caked in there. I know oftentimes I get like grass caked in there. So I can go ahead and wipe it down. Um, make sure you're getting any kind of smudging. This isn't your final like cleaning prior to um, application that you're gonna do, but just do um, you know anything that stands out, any water spots or that, just use that microfiber to kind of scrub them off and get to a point where you can make a really detailed clean right before you actually apply the glass. I'm gonna sound repetitive here, but step two is literally more cleaning. So there's a little white pouch in there that says installation auxiliary tools. So in here, there's a little alcohol pad as well as another like kind of microfiber cloth. It's much smaller than the one that I have, but I'm gonna use that to get any kind of oil residues or anything that's left over from, um, from that microfiber cloth that I used initially. I will give you one note. When I did this the last time, it left a little bit of like, um, I guess you'd say like trace elements of like some of the alcohol and stuff like that. So there were some spots on there. What we're gonna do after this step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna buff out the screen to make sure any kind of like water streaks or like streaks from using the alcohol pad are gone because you literally want nothing. And I'm gonna emphasize that like there can't be dust, there can't be anything under there. It, it'll still work and all that if you have dust. It's just, it leaves sometimes like little air bubbles or things along those lines. So you want this thing as clean as humanly possible. So I'm gonna rip this thing open. And as I mentioned, you get a little microfiber cloth just like that. Um, there's some stickers for reinstallation and then you have your little alcohol pad. So I'm going to go ahead and it is a little bit breezy out today. Make sure your microfiber cloth stays on something clean, but I'm going to expand this little alcohol swab thing. It's just like what you get at a barbecue place. And um, I'm gonna just go ahead and apply it and kind of like scrub all the way across. Um, like I said, you're not really, this isn't really a cleaning process because you're gonna get some streaking and some line residue. This is to get any kind of oils and any kind of residue that you can't see um, this is gonna help to break it down and then you'll do that final kind of cleaning with the microfiber cloth. And I think we're pretty good there. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take the little totally new microfiber cloth and um, just use like a gentle amount of pressure. I like using my three fingers, the one I smashed in the truck when I was shooting that, uh, that PB spotted bass video. I'm just going to buff back and forth. And sometimes you'll notice too, using different angles or doing maybe like a circular motion is gonna help you to remove any kind of streaking that you got. And definitely you wanna turn the graph a little um, at times because with different light, like the sun's going down, we're kinda in the afternoon here, but with different light, you end up seeing um, different streaks. So just cause you don't see streaks when it's laying flat doesn't mean there's not streaks. So if you turn it, let's see here, I actually did a pretty, pretty darn good job, but 
you turn it and there's a little bit in the corner but you get that now what's really going to be hard to see with the camera is there's a dust speck there there's a dust speck there and there's a hair there you need to make sure you're removing all of those and you can do it just by by kind of like wiping it down just like that but just make sure you're getting as much it's not the end of the world if you get a few dust specks on there i mean it is what it is dude nothing's perfect but try to be as diligent as humanly possible getting all those little specks of dust off there because you're going to get the best application you can possibly get so final step we're going to apply the glass we are going to peel back that guy right there and basically just lay it on there all right it's judgment time boys so i'm going to peel this thing back very slowly i'm going to butt it up against the edge and just use my fingers to hold and i'm going to let that joker just kind of set and i'm going to reset it a little to make sure we're getting it set correctly and then i'm going to just let it fall and let it suck up all the air i'm going to get out my credit card thing and i'm going to just help it to eat up all those air bubbles Just push it out like I said you can also do this with your finger um, that's a pretty easy way to do it let's just kind of work it towards the edges just using a bit of pressure and your edges are gonna be your most important game um, you got to kind of just push it out it's kind of like kneading bread man you need it towards the edge you need it towards the edge and then you can use your fingers a little bit seems to be settled on there pretty nicely now as you go through you'll probably notice a few bubbles as you kind of not bubbles but like spots as you kind of work through and just um you know working through with your finger you might notice them as the the temperatures change as well but that right there is pretty well set and then like i said too obviously we touched the front a whole bunch i can just take this uh this microfiber rag and uh wipe it down and uh hashtag protection I better not break any more screens. This thing looks pretty sweet. Now, as a note, God forbid you screw this up or if you get a piece of dust under there that drives you nuts or something along those lines, do not fret. Now, I chew my nails, so I have no nails, but if you have a friend or partner who has some fingernails, what you can do is kind of ply this thing up, pry it up a little bit, and then use the stickers that are included as the reinstall stickers. You stick it under there, you peel it back up, and then you reseat it and go through the same process. Now you can't do that like three weeks from now, but if you do it initially on your initial install, you, you can fix it within like an hour or two. It's not that big of a deal. But usually if you got it 90% right, you're good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this thing on the dash and let's go ahead and touch, touch uh, test the touch screen. Touch, 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 too many T's bro, too many, bog, too many T's. Thank God your name isn't Tom the Bog or something like that. We're going to touch the touch screen, kind of get a feel for how it works, how it looks, and uh, see how we like it. Welcome to my dashboard here. So I'm not going to lie right off the bat. Like, I kind of like them because I can see the, you can see the thickness of the glass. All right, we'll touch, touch. All right. All right, that's pretty good. So clarity is good. I really can't tell a difference. And actually what's kind of interesting, I have the sun glaring down on these. So if I were to be able to tell the difference with like glare or just like clarity or something along those lines, it would show up right now. Test this one. Okay, we're good. So let's go ahead and pull up a map here. It's actually, I mean, the touch is pretty good. My, my pinchers are a little bit, it's a little, you gotta be a little bit slower to kind of like zoom in and out with your fingers there but overall touchscreen is is pretty solid my biggest thing though dude overall is is just not worrying about obviously i'm not gonna like go out of my way to try to hit these graphs or anything like that but just having an insurance policy where i know that if i do make a mistake or do something stupid which is bound to happen literally bound to happen i at least have a buffer and from what i've read I mean, it's, I don't want to really test them in the sense of like hitting them with something, but from what I've read, these things are super strong. And the thickness of the glass indicates to me that it can take a lead weight, dude. I mean, it's gonna, it, now you might bust this glass, like the, the actual like glass, you might crack that, but I could care less about cracking the, you know, the graph glass. That's fine with me because the point is to have it as a buffer to absorb any kind of impact that occurs. So it's protecting that screen. And that's kind of my big play. So I'm going to play with them. 
as I move forward, you guys know how much I use my graph, so I'll give you kind of an extra little review or kind of a follow-up feedback on them. But overall, I like this because I'm sick of breaking graphs. It is an expensive process, and I always break them right before we go into summer when I need them for deep fishing. Yeah, because I have awesome timing. But check out Graph Glass. That's a basic, um, a basic review and install on them. I'll put a link to them down at Tackle Warehouse. Make sure, though, if you do go ahead and move forward and do one of these, make sure you're buying it for your specific graph. That's the biggest, most important thing because they're sized differently. But let me know what you think. If you got them and you've had them for a while, let me know what your perspectives are. Drop them down in the comments box. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. What do you think of Graph Glass? All good? Should we go fishing now? Yeah, I think so, too. Thank you guys for watching. We are out. <laughs>